Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Sparkle Thorn Designs. Today, I have my box suit I ordered. And it comes in this beautiful orange package. This, this one is, this is non-sponsored. I paid for this. I have seen this on several different channels. Uh, Cherry Wallace is where I saw it first. She does a lot of different unboxings and things. You should totally check her out. This one is when you first purchase, unless you specifically choose a different one. Um, like I think when I bought this, there was one that was a Hello Kitty that I could have gotten. But this one is the original first, first taste, first whatever. And I've already opened it, but I didn't take anything out of it. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm going to open it with you. It comes with a booklet and it says, Discover Japan, modern snacks traditionally inspired. Craving more? Shop these snacks at boxu.com slash boutique. So any of these things that you try or you think you might like or whatever, you can go back and just order straight from the shop. You don't have to do this. Um, I did just order a one-time box. Um, they have different monthly subscriptions based on, you know, how often you want to get it or if you just want to try it or whatever. So this is how it came packed. It's got this little booklet on the top. I'm already looking over here, you guys. On the back, it says, see you next month with more to explore about Japanese culture through the best snacks we can find. And what I really like about this is that it has like the top nine things you should know. It welcomes you to Boxu. And then it will talk about each, well, let's see, we have a discover where in Japan your snacks are from. And you can locate your snacks on the grid below. And then it, do, it goes through each one. It tells you all about the snack, where it's from, what kind of uh, taste it is. And I just think that's fabulous. So, let's get started. Uh, Christy was supposed to be here with me. Um, from what I've read is that they typically put in enough for two people at least to sample and enjoy. Um, I took the day off today and she was supposed to come over after she got off work, but she is sick. So if you guys can send some good vibes her way, that would be great. Um, all right. So the first thing is a thank you card from the founder. And I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna reach in the box, grab something at random, and then we can taste it and try it and, and see where it's from. So I'm going to reach back here in the back. This first thing says Kyoto on it. I don't want to damage all the packaging because I might want to put it in my junk journal. Okay. Ooh, it kind of looks like a little, looks like a little Rice Krispie treat. I'm sure that's not what it is. really good and I'm gonna have to try stuff and then look at it which is super adventurous for me because I'm not adventurous and if I read ingredients I might not try it but I'm being brave for all y'all it's called I'm not trying to butcher things but maybe Soka Sinbei Ume Zarame it's a rice cracker, and it says that it boasts the unique, uniquely irresistible tart and sweet flavor combination of ume, Japanese plum, and zarame, which is a granulated sugar. And it tells you that it's a savor flavory. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a savory flavor. Uh, it is vegetarian. It has wheat and soy in it if you have any kind of common allergies. 
and then it says also contains but it says none so I'll be finishing this but for now Mr. Sparklethorn will be enjoying the extras but uh, if I sit here and enjoy everything in front of you you're gonna be mad because uh, I'm having a good time eating all this good yummy stuff and two, the video will be humongous probably all right so the next one says Dolce and all of the packaging is just so pretty okay oxygen absorber do not eat <laughs> okay good thing we read this smells good it's, it's a very kind of looks like banana what I would say banana at bread I'm sure that's not what it is it's very good This one is an Earl Grey cake. Yes, that's much better. A fluffy cake with an elegant floral flavor. And it's made with this tea, a rich black tea from Not Notojima Island. So it's this one right here. And it does leave quite the aftertaste, but it's still very good. Okay, oh, I'm gonna save this one for one of the last ones. It does come with a Japanese green tea blended with roast, ro roasted rice, and it says low caffeine. And this is what it looks like, and it has all the directions on how to make it, which I should have. I'll put a clip right here after I've made it, brewed it, and tasted it. Let's find, okay, let's try this. And oh, I don't know, this one's... This is a, an exclusive collaboration with Simbe Lab, and it's called this. That may be the easiest way for me to do that. Okay, so this one is a Kanako Azuki Crunch, and it's B-H, I'm not sure how they're pronouncing that, specially freeze-dried Azuki beans peppered throughout the snack, Give it a little extra sweetness to elevate the combination of kanako, which is a roasted soybean powder and crushed cornflakes. So let's just, I think I'm going to get my scissors because I think that might give me a little bit easier time. Okay. This is what it looks like. It's got sugar looking and red. But if I didn't know it was sweet, I might would think it was like pepper or something. I don't think I like this one. I got crumbs on me. My taste buds are very meh, but this, if I didn't know what was already in it, I would think it was like soy flavored, like soy, soy sauce flavored. It's not terrible, but it's not what I would have expected from something that's kind of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like the, the toast. Well, toast, I guess, you know, like the, the, this is more like a cracker, like a thick cracker, but I wouldn't have called it sweet, which this says that it is. Its flavor is sweet. So I may have to try that again because that, that was not, I wasn't a fan of that personally. All right. Handmade Yuzu, Yuzu Saki candy. All right. Let's find it in the book. This is handmade yuzu sake candy. This yuzu shu flavored candy is handcrafted by the artisans at Daimonji, exclusive for Boxu. 
Our version blends yuzu juice and peel with sake for a refreshingly citrus candy. It has its own little rip thing. Zippy bag so you can zip it back closed. Oh, okay. Interesting. They're kind of all together and I don't know if there's supposed to be that way or not. But let's just get one. It's very light. And I would say Like I would have assumed it was gonna be a lemon drop. It's not lemony, like it, to me it kinda of is, but it's not, but I think that's my brain saying, hey, this is a lemon drop, even though it's not. And I'm not a, leave it in my mouth, so excuse me while I crunch it up and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, and it was good. It was really, really good. It also contains alcohol, okay. It also says, note, this candy contains 0.1% alcohol content, so please consume responsibly. So y'all, don't go buy a whole bunch and try to get drunk on it. I guess that's what it's trying to say. Like, I, I guess they have to put that in there, but that just seems a little crazy. Okay, moving on. Let's try some what looks like chips. And I think there's some seaweed in here, and that's what I'm really excited about. So I'm hoping that there's actually some in there. Okay, so, oh, well, what is this? This looks fascinating. It looks like pineapple. Let me find it. Iberigato Smoky Chips. These chips are flavored with Akita Prefecture Specialty. And that Iberigato, I'm sure that's not how you say it, or smoked pickle radish. Sanchin's potato chips are made with rice flour, providing a lighter texture with a satisfying crunch. All right, let's just give these a shot. Okay. Ooh, I smell some pickles in there. All right. Oh, these are so cute looking. These kind of look like. There's an American, well, I don't know if it's American. There's an American chip that kind of has that texture, but I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head. Let's get a shot. Oh my gosh. Yes. Now I'm guessing if it's got some kind of radish, it's gonna have a kick, which I can taste just a little bit. I'm not a radish fan. This, this is fabulous. Mmm. Mmm, not too salty. Beautiful crisp. And it does say pickled, but it's not, I can smell the pickled, but I didn't necessarily, necessarily taste the pickled. But wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, what's this? I think this is the one I read about earlier. This is the Don Don Yaki about the taiko drum and look at this picture y'all cute cute and it's got the the taiko drum all right be careful with that one because i know that i will want to put this packaging in my junk journal to show what i did today okay this one is the one that's fried and marinated in tonkatsu sauce that uh, has a flavor that is tangy, peppery, and a bit sweet. I mean, they're good. They're very good. I don't have any specific flavor to give you for that though. I might want to get a drink to, you know, wash away the other flavors. Okay. 
Very good. That was very good. Let's go something sweet. Ah, butter cream, a uh, yo, Yokohama buttercream sandwich biscuit. Okay, let me find that real quick. Smoky chips. You guys, these cookies are a popular gift for Yokohama tourists because each treat has vignettes of the city printed on them. Okay. They're filled with a luscious buttercream that balances the more savory of the cookies. Yum. That sounds great. Oh, okay. I don't know. I may have had it upside down. So in case I had it upside down, here it is. Looks like there's a boat and a lantern. Anyway, let's give this one a shot. Oh, well, this is what they're talking about. Look how cute. Do I have it upside down? No, I don't think so. And then, okay, and then this way. That is super cute and original. That is fabulous. Mmm. Butter cookie for sure. I didn't get a lot of frosting in that bite. That was very good. The buttercream is not just overwhelming. The butter cookie is light and crisp. Great combination. Okay, what is this? This is our next package. Let me find it. This is seaweed tempura or tempura sudachi citrus. It says these addictive seaweed sheets yes, are batter fried and flavored with the native Japanese sudachi to create a crisp and tangy snack that will leave your taste buds tingling. This also contains mollusk shellfish. So let's, let's check it out. I think I'm definitely going to have to sign up for a subscription, like a monthly subscription box. And that may be something that I do next year and start it in January and then have it for the year. All right, so this, this is, what it looks like. Ooh, what does that smell? I don't know, but it smells really good. There's a lot of flavor going on there. I'm gonna have to have another one. Those are really good, you guys. Those are super good. Christy, girlfriend. That'll teach you for getting sick. Okay, I am gonna have to get a drink though because that one did have kind of the seafoody smell, taste, like both. Drinking me some green tea, you guys. It's my new thing, love it. Have to make it a lot weaker though because it's just too strong otherwise. Okay, here is my next one. I should have kept the seaweed things for the end because I can still taste them strongly. Okay, so vegetable arar, arare maybe, tomato. Rice cracker that perfectly encapsulates a tomato's unique combination of sweet, savory, and slightly sour. Mm. Okay, oh, this one's a little bit broke. I'm gonna go and pop that in. Oh, it just fell apart all over my desk. I'm not much of a fan of that. I did eat the whole thing. I'm trying to. Okay, that one. That one didn't have a lot of flavor for me, 
but uh, maybe it's because I had the seaweed thing going on. I'm not sure. And I think I, I wasn't a big fan of the texture. It's like it wanted to be a rice cake, but it was kind of stale. That's probably the way it's supposed to taste because everything in here has been fabulous. I was not quite a fan of that. Okay, so here's the next one. Let me find it. Oh, here we go. This is called a Z Zawawa Sable. A sable is a crispy French butter cookie. This one gets a Japanese twist with the addition of car caramelly Okinawan black sugar. Ooh. I'm checking it out over here, looking at myself going, ooh, like I've never seen it before. Okay. All right, so here's this one. It's an interesting looking little cookie. It's um it's good. It kind of has I'm guessing it's the black sugar maybe, but it kind of has a shortbread cookie texture with whatever flavor. I'm thinking that's the black sugar because I can still kind of taste it in the back of my throat. But it's a delight. It's delightful. Y'all sometimes I just Okay, I might should have had some peppermint tea in here to clean the palettes. Okay, we've done that one, we've done that one, we've done that one, I'm gonna lay them over here. Ooh, what is this? Oh, I know what these are. Okay, we're gonna wait and do those. These are the ones that have the black bean in them, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, I wanna wait on that one. Um, let's do this, it's called Cute Selection. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure this is a green tea cake. Matcha, not, not green tea, matcha. And I, that's what I meant, it just not what came out. So this is called a matcha stick cake, chocolate. <clears throat> this soft cake uses matcha from Uji Kyoto, which is known for its high quality. Pairing matcha with bittersweet chocolate chips gives this cake a rich, subtly sweet flavor. And I am super excited. I want to buy myself the matcha, the, you know, the Japanese matcha tea set, you know, with all the stuff like from Karate Kid because, oh, yes. Anyway, um, and I've got a couple in my cart on Amazon that I am just kind of holding off because buying other things, but I'm going to do that. And I'm going to tell you guys, if you have Seven Brew, they make a blended matcha. I usually get mine without sweetener because I'm trying to, you know, not do sugars and stuff like that. But with or without, uh, go try it today. All right. Here's another one of those don't eat things. Oh, that smells so good. And I'm going to take this in with the chocolate chips. Mr. Sparklethorn probably won't want this anyway because he told me today that he doesn't like chocolate. And I was like, okay. All right. So here it is with its yummy chocolate chips. Mmm. Mmm. So soft. Oh my lord, y'all. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm you know, the only thing that would have improved it even more is if there was some kind of berry in it, which may not go with the matcha. Um, yum. I mean, that was just like, it almost melted in my mouth. It was so good. Just a hint of the chocolate with the matcha flavor. Holy moly's. Okay. I'm getting... All right, let's do the black bean thing because I'm pretty sure that's what this is. So look at the packaging. Look at this packaging. This is so cute. Okay. Kind of don't want to mess up the packaging. It looks so stinking cute. Let's see if we can, there we go. That's not too bad. And then I'll just do this. Okay. All right. 
and then I can maybe keep this. That's even better. All right. I keep saying all right. All right, all right, all right. You gotta be smarter than the packaging. Okay, oh, look at that. All right, so it's even after the cute packaging. Okay, opening things like this is never my friend. All right, so these, these are the One Bite Sesame Mochi. Chewy, nutty, and not too sweet. This yummy bite-sized mochi has an Onco red bean filling and a black and white sesame seed coating. So, let's give that a shot. <coughs> let's try a black one. They're kind of squishy. And it says one bite. We're gonna go. Kind of gummy. Mmm. Picture looks like it's kind of gummy. See how? I'm gonna tell you. If I popped that in my mouth and I thought it was like a rice ball or something else other than what I knew it was gonna be, it might have gone into the trash. That was not my favorite. And I'm curious, I'm gonna guess that probably that the white one, um, I'm gonna guess that they taste exactly the same, except there is a difference in flavor in the sesame seeds. So I'm not gonna try another one right now because that was not my favorite. Mm -mm. It was interesting and it wasn't terrible. But like I said, if I picked that up and put that in my mouth thinking it was, um, candy or cupcake or rice ball uh yeah that that would have been ugly for me okay all right we're down to the last three so we've got let's see i think i think we're gonna do this one this one says palm uh, oh no no it says pear fromage biscuit to tori the 20th century pear and this is what the packaging looks like Okay. This delicate biscuit is a luxurious blend of 20th century Asian pear, rich cheese, and a decadent white chocolate. I'm sure this is going to be delightful, but I'm going to tell you, disclaimer up front, pears and cheese is a no. That doesn't even remotely sound good. And I am not a white chocolate fan. So hopefully this will taste, I'm sure, better than what it sounds like. That's why I said I should probably the beginning I should just try it and then yeah this is why uh oh this one's all broke up but let's it smells fantastic If I was eating the whole cookie, I might feel differently. But right now with one bite, this smells beautiful. But its taste for me was just kind of, yeah. Like I can still kind of taste, I guess, the cheese or whatever. Or maybe it's the chocolate. I don't really, it didn't have a hard white chocolate flavor. So I'm guessing the cheese and the, the chocolate kind of mellow each other out. But it's good but I think it smelled better than it tasted. Okay, two more things. This one is called, um, I don't know, it's something chocolate. Is exactly what it says on this package. And it says, on, on pond or in pan, I'm, I'm sure it's on pond, maybe not, is a sweet roll filled with bean paste. That other thing was bean paste. Um, this brownie-like treat gets an upgrade with the addition of rich chocolate. This luscious dessert is best enjoyed paired with hot tea. So this, and I probably should have known this because I'm pretty sure when I watched this on Cherry Wallace, she said the same thing, bas basically the same thing about she should have made the tea. I should have made the tea, y'all. All right. 
I love that all their packaging has the do not eat stuff in it. Okay, so it is wrapped inside the wrapper, which is kind of cool. Let's see. <laughs> doesn't smell like a chocolate brownie. I can see why it would be good with tea, which I have tea, not, not hot tea. It's kind of dry. But it's, it's okay. And the reason I took a second bite was to try to get some of the bean paste. And I feel like maybe there's more bean paste in the center than there was right on the edge. Because um, I don't feel like I got much. But uh, that might be worth taking another bite in a little bit. All right, for the last thing. My only thing is, is, is it's white, but I think this is gonna be the best thing of the whole batch. This is a white strawberry. The world's first chocolate infused strawberry produced exclusively for Boxu. Locally harvested strawberries are freeze dried Yum, infused with white chocolate to make a sweet, refreshing treat. And not gonna lie, Mr. Sparkle, this one may not even be in his little thing. I may just be like, ooh, no, there wasn't anything else in there. Oh my goodness, this is beautiful, y'all. Look at this. <clears throat> just looks like a strawberry. If you have not had freeze dried fruit, um, one of our patients, and I think I may have already said something about it, because I'm gonna eat this whole thing. She brought me some freeze-dried peaches that, that they had made. Oh, they were so good. Mm, they were so good. I was glad that Mr. Sparklethorn's not big into a lot of sweet, sweet stuff, so I got to eat them all. Mm. It's not soft, I guess, because of the chocolate. No, that's not what I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's good, but. Mm -mm. That was less freeze dried for me as it was almost like a white chocolate strawberry. Like, like they hold out the center and put the chocolate in and then you've just got the strawberry on the outside. That's kind of what it was for me. It was solid and I can taste the strawberry right now, like the original like the fruit. But for the most part, that one was kind of a no for me, so I'm, I'm sad that I saved it to last because I really thought it was going to be the best one. All right, so before we close, I think, I think out of all of these, I liked the candy a lot. I liked the seaweed, which I don't know. Oh yeah, hello, it's sitting in a great big thing in front of me. I liked the seaweed. And I really liked the citrus candy, because I'm a candy fool. I mean, there ain't, there ain't, there ain't no denying it, y'all. And I liked the matcha. I think these were my top three. I liked everything pretty much. I mean, there wasn't anything I hated, which is saying a lot. So, um, again, non-sponsored. Um, I know that there's another like Japanese snack box can't think of the name of it right now but I may try that one next but I had heard so many good things about this one and I like that they have like a 
online market. So I can go online and order me some more chips or some more seaweed. And I think I wanna order, I wanna order, I wanna get some seaweed sheets. Never had them, I've seen them, want to try them. So that's all for today. Y'all go out and spread God's love and have a fabulous day. See you soon.